Ugh, this phone drives me crazy. Excuse me, I'm the Sprinter and from Sprint. Try my new iPhone XR with an amazing liquid retina display. This is amazing. Mind if I snap a few photos? Look at that color. I love this display. I, uh, I'm gonna need that back. Switch to Sprint and get iPhone XR 64 gigabytes for $0 per month with an eligible trade-in and a Sprint Flex lease. Visit a Sprint store, sprint.com slash iPhone, or call 1-800-SPRINT-1. Phone $0 per month for 18 months after thirty-one twenty-five per month credit apply within two bills. If you cancel early, remaining balance due. Excludes tax subject to credit. $30 activation fee. Coverage and offer not everywhere. Restrictions apply. Blog Talk Radio. Hi, this is Jeff Alpin. I'm known professionally as the Big Game Hunter because I've been hunting down leaders and staff for organizations for close to 40 years now. And welcome to No BS Job Search Advice, my radio show that I'm launching today. I've been a search professional for close to 40 years now, and frankly, what I've learned over the course of time is that most job hunters really are not good at finding work. They may be excellent at their craft, but frankly, they need some coaching and some help. And I learned that lesson very painfully during the post-9-11 period in the United States, where there was really no job market. That was the first really major disruption in employment, and now we look back on it as you know, being relatively mild by what's happened in the last few years in the U.S., but you know, at that time, it was a cataclysmic event. No firms were hiring. Hundreds of thousands of people were laid off, not all that different than what's, what's happened uh, in the last two years. And there was a person who I was working with uh, professionally, who'd hired a lot of people from me, who'd gotten fired from his job, because you know he really wasn't needed anymore, since there was really very little uh, new trading systems work that was being done in New York. So he calls me up and he he's asking for help, and basically he's telling me about having sent out a lot of resumes and having networked with a lot of people, and really getting no results, and asking for some advice, and. You know, it was very painful to to be able to work with him during that time because really there was very little that I as a headhunter could do. But what I could do as a coach to him was deconstruct all the mistakes he was making in his search. And out of that came the idea for my first book, which was which is called Get Yourself Hired Now, and a series of of books and audios and other items. Uh, that bring me to the point of doing this show. As I said, I've been a recruiting professional for close to 40 years, and uh, I know how painful job hunting is for most people. It's kind of like root canal or being audited by the Internal Revenue Service. So what I've tried to do in the course of my work is make it less painful and a lot easier by giving people information and knowledge that they need in order to find work. So that's what we're going to do with No BS Job Search Advice. Uh, This week's episode is just going to be me speaking. Uh, I'm not going to be taking any calls, but in future uh, broadcasts, I will. I just want to get my feet wet because, frankly, this is my first show, and I just want to get used to the equipment and and the process of, of doing an online radio show. So I'll start off by saying I'm a little bit nervous. And just bear with me a little bit. I hope you find the information I provide you with today uh, useful to you in your search. So let me start by saying that more and more organizations are doing phone interviews as part of their recruiting process. Now, in days back, individuals were invited in for an interview as the first process, and they meet with human resources um, waiting in the reception area for the manager who would talk with them, and on and on and on through a progression of individuals until ultimately uh, a firm made a decision. These days, and it's been going on for quite a few years, more organizations are starting off with phone interviews. And frankly, from your standpoint, phone interviews are easier and they're harder than face to face interviews. They're harder in that a firm is influenced in any way, shape, or form by your appearance because they can't see you unless they're using a Skype service, which most firms don't do. They're not influenced by what a great wardrobe you have. All they have is your voice to go by. So, on the other hand, it's easier. 
it's easier in that they can't see that you might have your resume out in front of you. They can't see the fact that you might have some notes or taking some notes in the course of the interview. So that's my encouragement to you. If you're going to be phone interviewed, have a, a copy of your resume in front of you. Take some notes. And one of the simplest notes that you can start off with is each time that they ask you a question, just jot it down in front of you. Part of the reason I suggest that is so often I'm left with people on these long, ridiculous diatribes or monologues um, when I just ask them a very simple question. Uh, and it feels like they're going on for five or ten minutes. And I don't know about you, but most people I know don't have the attention span on an interview to listen for five or ten minutes. So just jot a quick note down with what the question is so you can stay on point for the conversation. And you know, as they ask you question after question, just remember your voice is your only sales tool here. So you want to be passionate. You want to be enthusiastic as you speak. You don't want to be talking as a true individual, like Marvin the Mechanical Robot in the, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy trilogy. You know, dull and boring and tedious. You want to sound like you have some enthusiasm for what you're doing and not burned out or tired in any way. So if you're going to be phone interviewed, number one is make sure you have a quality phone to work with. But try not to use your cell unless you can be sure you have great service. Uh, use a landline instead. Make sure you have some privacy so that you're not whispering with other people around you. You know what I'm talking about. I've, I've done interviews galore with individuals who, frankly, you know they're with others at that point and can't excuse themselves. And instead of just pausing and saying, um, you're catching me at an inconvenient time. Would it be all right if I called you back at, and you offer a time as, as an alternative? Instead, what they do is they start to whisper. And, and you know you can't be particularly enthusiastic whispering. You, know, you just sound like a psychopath when you whisper during an interview. So... Find a comfortable place where you can speak. If you're at home, find a room where you can be uh, private. Make sure that there are no interruptions. The kids aren't yelling in the background. Uh, the TV isn't blasting. Uh, make sure that uh, if you use an answering machine that or a screening service for your calls, that the message is a mature, uh, is a mature one uh, as you talk with people. After all, you don't want to be having a, a voicemail message uh, in case you happen to be away that says, Hi, this is Greggy, and this is Sally, and this is Ron. We're the so-and-so family. You, know, you want to have an adult message, not the, you know, the sort of silly thing that sometimes people use. You know. So as uh, the interview goes on, you want to stay on point. You want to be able to answer questions in 30 to 40 seconds tops. So that way the conversation becomes interactive. You're able to keep on point with what the firm is looking for. So you know, I'll say that most interviews are going to start off in a pretty predictable way. And that's with that ever popular tell me about yourself question we've heard a, a million different times. So tell me about yourself and what you've been doing professionally is the standard way it's phrased or words to that effect. And most people are going to start off by saying, well, I've been in the field for X number of years. For the last two years, I've been working for so-and-so where I've done this or that or this or that. And you know, that's the way the Inquisition normally starts off, talking about what you've done professionally. And that's whether it's a, a phone interview or an in-person interview. Now, here's the way I'd like you to construct the answer, which is a little bit different. Instead of just simply saying, you know, I've been in the field for such and such a number of years, for so the last few years I've been working for so-and-so, or I've done whatever it is, you might start off the conversation that way and then continue on. So you get to that point where there's a natural break in the conversation where you feel like you've answered the standard question. And then you continue on by saying, and I'm sure a lot of people say things like that to you when you interview them. But what makes me a little bit different is, and then you talk about the things that you've done that are a little bit different than the 
average individual doing your kind of work, how you've helped the firm make more money, how you've helped them save some money in the course of your work, how you've taken on responsibilities that others in your organization frankly don't choose to take on and how you've been recognized for doing that, not because you are out there begging for attention, but you know, because you did exceptional work. So, again, you do that even in the phone interview. And, again, the segue is, well, I've been in the field now for such and such amount of time. You talk about that experience and then continue on by saying, but I'm sure you hear a lot of people saying something like that in the course of answering questions. But what makes me a little bit different is, and then you talk about some of the differences between you and some of the other folks that you might be interviewing uh, in competition with. So I want to talk with you also about some of the jobs I'm recruiting for in this episode. And I start off by saying that a lot of the work I do is in technology recruiting. Now, I do work in other areas, but you know, generally you're going to hear me talking about technology-related work. Uh, in, when I talk about jobs. And I, I do a lot of work with professional services firms, but people in my organization will often work with other clients in other industries. So a couple of the roles that I'm recruiting for now is one is for an individual who, actually I'm looking for six or seven of them for this client, uh, who has experience in infrastructure and managed services sales. Uh, this is a firm, this division is maybe about a billion four in size. The parent firm is about five billion in sales. And they're looking for uh, veteran individuals who, let's say, 10, 15 years of experience as a senior manager or executive in IT infrastructure, outsourcing, offshoring, managed services, working with enterprise customers. The way the compensation is going to be constructed is it'll go between 100 and 120 on a base, plus a bonus on top of that that should add another 100% to 150% uh, for compensation. So someone making 100,000 on a base would be earning between two and 250. I suspect you can do the math from there. I have a role in Edison, New Jersey. This is not one of those big, high-paying jobs, but. Uh, I have a client who's an e-commerce firm that's looking for what I would say is a junior systems engineer, uh, someone who might be working for a large organization uh, at this time and you know, wants to get out of that big place where they can get compartmentalized and wants to go join an organization that is smaller where they can be doing a lot of different things. Um, that's based in Middlesex County, New Jersey. Um, there's someone with an IIS background specifically uh, that they're looking for, and it will pay in the area of 55 to 70 thousand a year on a base plus a bonus. Now, I have a lot of other jobs on my website, which is jeffaltman.com. That's spelled J-E-F-F-A-L-T-M-A-N.com. If you go to my website. What I'd encourage you to do is sign up for a complimentary subscription to my e-zine, which is called No BS Job Search Advice. I publish that weekly on Tuesdays, and I believe it's distributed around noon that day. And my e-zine is going to give you job search tips, uh, recommendations of websites and books that you can order. They're going to help you with your search. While you're on my site, you might spend a little time exploring it, and by that I mean reading some of the previous articles I've written for No BS Job Search Advice Easing, um, taking a look at some of the websites that I have available where you can post your resume. Uh, I've got easy to work with career builder links that you can work with there. And you know, instead of going through long, complicated search strings, it's pretty easy. There's a lot of tools and toys that are available on the site. So. Welcome to the maiden voyage of No BS Job Search Advice Radio. I'm Jeff Altman, the Big Game Hunter. If you're interested in advertising on this show, contact me at thebiggamehunter at gmail.com. If you're interested in being a guest there, feel free to do the same. Send me an email. And I hope to see you for the next show, which will probably be in about two weeks. Take care. 
Welcome to the Total Wireless Store, where total confidence awaits. I am done dealing with data overages. Don't worry, you got this at the Total Wireless Store. Bring your number and get 15 gigs of data for $50 on the nation's best 4G LTE network. And during our 50% more data promotion, you'll actually get 22.5 gigs for the same price. 22.5 for 50? That's a gig deal. Data it is. Discover the Total Wireless Stores and get total confidence. The latest phones, the best network, all at great prices. Ends January 2nd, 2019. Excludes ports from TrackPhone Wireless Inc. Brands. Terms at TotalWireless.com.